Is the <laughs> January 19th Transportation Planning Policy Committee? Is your mic on? Nope. Yep. I turned it on. Is your mic on? Because oh, you. Oh, hello, hello. I'm working. Is that better? Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay. January 19th, 2023 Transportation Planning Policy Committee and the Kern Council of Governments Board of Directors meetings. We'll start with the, and I never see it on here, but we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. And justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Vasquez. Trujillo. Here. Phil Smith. Here. Bob Smith. I'm here. Zach Scrivener. Here. Gilberto Reyna. I'm here. Kathy Prout. Cindy Parra. Right here. Jim Crichton. Here. Michael Navarro. Here. Orshel Cryer. Alec Garcia. Oh, I'm sorry. Alex is not <laughs> going to be here. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Don't know why he's on my list. Hey, Malcolm Warney. Here. John Crump. Here. Kyle Blades. Kirsten Helton. Here. David Couch. And Saul Ion. I hope I say that right. Kathy's on. Fine. Here. And Kathy Prout. I've got you, Kathy. <laughs> Thank you. And Saul Ion, Mayor of City of McFarland, first meeting. And so welcome to Kern Council of Governments. Uh, thank you. Public comments. Oh. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask questions for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? I see none here, none online. Item number three, special action item, Assembly Bill 361, authorizing teleconferencing under certain conditions. Ms. Napier. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just want to let the board uh, know that Veronica Vasquez from Delano has signed on. Yes, this is our normal resolution that allow authorizes remote teleconferencing of meetings. Uh, this uh, resolution is from January 19th, 2023 to February 18th of 2023, and we're asking for the adoption of resolution number 23-02. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Yes, Mr. Ion. Aye. Kirsten Helton. 
Yes. John Crump. Yes. Malcolm Morney. Yes. Orshel Cryer. Yes. Jim Crichton. Yes. Cindy Parra. Yes. Kathy Prout. Yes. Gilberto Reyna. Yes. Zach Scrivener. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Olivia Trujillo. Yes. And Veronica Vasquez. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. County Council will present a report on post-COVID tel telecommute regulations, which will start in a couple months. Yes, that's correct. These will start uh, at the end of February. As you may have heard, the COVID state of emergency declaration will end at the end of February. So February will be the last meeting where AB 361 still applies. Now, AB 361 is the law that creates the current teleconferencing system that we've been passing a resolution for every month, but it only applies during a state of emergency. So the legislature amended the Brown Act to create an additional way to hold teleconferencing, and that is a new bill called AB 2449. And it's, it's relatively difficult to do teleconferencing under AB 2449. There are several conditions that have to be met. Um, first, the legislative body must have at least a quorum present in person. And so we would, if we are going to do teleconferencing going forward, we need to coordinate that in advance to make sure that we don't have too many people trying to teleconference. Um, we, so we ha would have to have at least a quorum in person. Um, additionally, a member who wants to appear remotely must notify the body, the legislative body, at the earliest opportunity of, of showing of cause for why they want to appear remotely. Um, I think that's something that can work for KernCog in particular because the, the types of causes that are allowed are things such as child care, elder care, or travel. I know for KernCog, a lot of people travel a long distance to get here, and it, it might be useful for them to cut down on that travel time. Um, there are other conditions. Uh, any, any particular member can only use this twice per year. There's also an exception for a medical emergency. It's, it's not super clear how that, you know, how that works. Um, they're they're kind of leaving us to fill in the blanks there, but if a member has a medical emergency that requires them to teleconference, they can do that. And then there's also a restriction on how much the legislative body uses teleconferencing. Uh, we couldn't do it for more than three months in a row and we couldn't do, or we couldn't do it for more than 20% of meetings. So it's, it's kind of a convoluted teleconferencing scheme. We can make it work if people really want to telecommute. Uh, there's just some steps that we have to follow. So you can't do it three months in a row and no single person can do it more than twice That's in a right. year. <laughs> Yeah, pretty difficult. Any questions for the attorney? Miss Napier. Yes, I just have a question. Who keeps track of all this? Miss <laughs> Napier. <laughs> I got the answer to that. <laughs> you know, that, that might be a reason why uh, some legislative bodies decide not to use teleconferencing. It does appear that this is a fairly, fairly tricky to keep all these things lined up. Mr. Chairman, can I ask sure. a question? Uh, Brian, do, in your uh, opinion, can you advise us? Do we need to make an opinion? Can we wait? Can we just... Uh, well, we still have teleconferencing available to us next month. So for February, we can still, we can still use the current system, AB 361. Uh, if you want to uh, take a position on this, you could make a recommendation to the council to adopt a policy relating to teleconferencing. Um, it could be done ad hoc, but you do run the risk that you might not have a quorum. Question? Yes. 
Uh, does that mean that those of us who are alternates are not going to be able to access the Zoom to be on a standby? That's a good question. I think that when they refer to a member in this section, it, it would probably, it would most likely relate to the representative of a city or a county under uh, in Kerncog. Um, so if if the alternate is absent w once and telecommutes once, and the the regular member is absent once, I, I think that would probably be two times. Well, I guess part of my question is I, as an alternate, uh, enjoy, you know, accessing and observing, listening, following, even though my primary, uh, Mr. Crump, is uh, in present. But I, I also, am I still going to be able to access remotely? In that case, you know, there's nothing in the Brown Act that would prohibit you from accessing remotely. So what about public in general? The public in general, you can still hold teleconferencing for public access purposes. And do they, do they have, uh, can they make public comments to, to that? You can, yeah, you can still hold it open for public comment, for public access. Uh, it really is, uh, the intent of the bill is really more aimed at uh, trying to get members of the legislative body here in person. May I ask a question? <clears throat> Certainly, Supervisor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Mr. Van Wick, uh, we went over this in LAFCO as well, uh, I guess it would have been um, last month. And um, that, that three month that you, um, that you brought up, that wasn't something that I remember from our conversation. I could have missed it if they said it, but I don't know if we did. So can you clarify that? You said that you can only do it three months in a row. So does that mean that you can only, we can only make the teleconferencing available to members of this body for three months at a time, and then we have to have to have a meeting with with that not available for anyone? That's right. What the what the new law says is that the you can only use these provisions for up to three consecutive months, or for a total of twenty percent of the regular meetings within a calendar year. So it, it depends on how many meetings you have. Typically, Current Cog has 11. So we would have three total for the year. Does that mean that I have to go back to my permutations and combinations class and learn how to do all of that uh, calculation? A question. I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, I, but but Kern Cog is still going to have it available on Perfect. online for people who want to either make public comments or just uh, yes. the public wants to just hear what's going on at the meeting. So that's going to be that's always going to be made I guess available. We, we can decide that, right? Yeah, that that's we really a, that's a really a matter for Kern Cog to decide. Uh, this doesn't prohibit you from doing that. It would let you do it. Um, but it, does, also it doesn't require you to okay. do it. One other question, please. Sure. Um, okay, so so that way, if we made it available every all 11 meetings, um, we could only have three in a row where a member of the body could participate through that medium. Um, and then we'd have to take a month off and then we would go back. Is that how it works? Three months in a row, take one off, and then you could go back and allow it for, for three months? No. And did, did, or, or how? Do, oh, but only twenty percent. So, so no. So no. So it's three. So, three so, total. so essentially, what it, it seems to me is that that so people, pe members of this body, should use that um, in if, in very rare occasions. Say they were ill and didn't want to come in for that reason, but they wanted to participate because their alternate wasn't available, and we needed them for quorum. And so we would then, therefore, need to have them participate in order to meet quorum. I think that we should look at it probably from that angle. Um, if we're having an issue with quorum, perhaps we could we should use it in that occasion. Um, but otherwise, I, th I think it's every all hands on deck from once once we get through February. Does that 
am I tracking that properly? No, that that makes sense, and that's that's a good interpretation. I think you know it. This really does. If you reserve those meetings, you might be able to have a quorum in a situation where you otherwise wouldn't by saving those meetings, the teleconference meetings for that situation. Yeah, I'd, I'd submit to the to the council that 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 should probably be the way we. We treat the teleconferencing in the oh, yeah. future once That's we get past February, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I, I, I actually, I should correct myself. So there has to be at least a quorum in person, no matter what. Right. So if oh, right. Yeah. So, so that's it doesn't, mid. It yeah, doesn't so work in that so situation. So that's mid. Okay. So, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So would we decide, yes, we allow teleconferencing, but we're not according to Supervisor Scrivener, taking advantage of it. So it would say we allow it throughout. Mm -hmm. And nobody takes advantage of it for four months, and then somebody needs to use it. So does that count as our three or four months? Or if nobody's using it, it doesn't count just because it was available? So that, that would be one of the three per calendar year. So, you know, this, this year we will actually have less than 10, or we'll have less that we'll have less than 10 months so out of our we'll have eight eight or nine we'll have December. because beginning in march so we'll have either eight or nine meetings uh under ab2449 but we still have a total of 11 for the year or 12. um <laughs> I, I think it really does make sense for people to save these for for really good cause um you know we're, we're pretty limited in how many we can do so uh i would i would recommend that council members try to be mindful of whether these are true emergency situations or true difficulty to be here situations um so we don't use up no, i get that but my question is is does does the cog have to decide whether we're going to allow it at all or we're going to allow it on certain dates or we're going to allow it whenever so you don't have to just you don't have to, don't have to do you don't have to make a decision you don't have okay. to adopt a policy but you do have to take a vote to approve the cause for teleconferencing uh on the night that it happens so um if we come in and somebody wants to teleconference it has to be planned in advance so that it can be agendized it can be added to the agenda late under these provisions but you're required to communicate early if possible question yes can can there be a simple summary of the determinations that we're reaching tonight about this that can be published as a we're not uh, just a simple comp a little comprehensive uh discussion by someone who's smarter than some of us <laughs> me so the, the COG is not determining anything tonight, but I can provide a brief legal memo summarizing the provisions of the new law. Thank you, that's good. One last question, Phil. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. So if any one member uses it, that counts as a use of the one time per month, one of the three times. Correct. Okay, thank you. Question. Yes. Uh, what happens if we don't have a quorum? present so if you if you don't have a quorum present then you can't hold the meeting well we we, we can't vote on uh, any action items that's that's correct you could still hear the reports of informational items <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how frequently does that occur I'm sorry what how frequently does it occur that we do not have a quorum uh, in I attendance at the meeting yes I I would have to look back um, We've been pretty and, successful. and see because I think during during the last you know probably six months it's probably happened several times yeah well, well uh, over 2020 and 2021 there were many times where we did not have a quorum in person right because of COVID right, right. prior to COVID we did okay thank yeah. you um, can I ask one more question um can you go back to the the original brown act and or do you have to go by this this bill so you're you're not required to offer uh teleconferencing you can hold meetings strictly in person if that's what you choose to do 
No, I mean, can but under the old one, can't you teleconference in if you post the agenda and that that's also an option you can post the agenda and hold your location open to the public i know sometimes uh, in the more remote communities that's that's something that you like to do and does that count towards like let's say someone from ridgecrest wanted to attend the meeting at ridgecrest city hall would that count towards the the quorum that would count towards the quorum oh so that's and it would not count towards the two or three teleconferencing that's correct simple <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like it to me Any more? <laughs> <laughs> i'll put that together question yes it, did i hear that rightly that uh, it, at ridgecrest someone could go to the city council chambers and that would count as a for them for the that particular council that's correct live. so the the brown act now provides three different ways that you can do teleconferencing uh, the original brown act teleconferencing was that you could agendize a location have it held open to the public and make teleconferencing arrangements at that location um, for example ridgecrest city hall and that would count as a member in attendance at the meeting. Or Maricopa City Hall? No, wherever it may be. Question, so you're saying that, first you said that we need to be present, we need to have a quorum, and that if any, any one member wanted to attend via teleconference, that we would only be allowed three times, uh, whether in a row or within the calendar year, but now you're saying that they they can attend via teleconferencing if they are, for example, at a city hall. Is that what I'm understanding? I mean, if it's it noticed, then the public can attend. Is the key, I think. Okay. Any any location that is posted on the agenda and held open to the public. You can be. I think Harold Hansen was on a cruise once and did it. I mean, you can be. In it, you don't have to be at a city hall. You just have to post it. I understand that. It. I understand. So as long as it is posted that this location th that they're going to be teleconferenced from is open to the public. That's correct. All right. Thank you. But it has to be done seventy two hours. Question: Does that in does that allow? Question: That's correct. I'm sorry. It has to be on the agenda. That, yes. Does that, that does that allow for a bullet list of the summary that we're discussing here, so that we can kind of simply address those issues on our own with your when you do your simple report I'll, I'll prepare a list like that that draws it all out we'll see how Thank simple you. the attorney can get <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you sir item four or consent agenda opportunity for public comment all items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions if comment or discussion is desired by anyone the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken does any member wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Uh, no public removal. I'll move approval of the consent agenda, Chairman. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Aon? Aye. John Crump? Yes. Malcolm Warney? Yes. Orshel Cryer? Yes. Michael Navarro? Yes. Jim Crichton? Yes. Cindy Parra? Yes. Kathy Prout? Yes. Gilberto, Re Gilberto Reyna? Aye. Zach Scrivener? Aye. Bob Smith? Yes. Phil Smith? Phil Smith, Olivia Trujillo, yes, Veronica Vasquez, yes, 
Phil Smith. Mm. Phil Smith, you're on mute. He's trying. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Item 5, 2023 Federal Transportation Improvement Program, Draft Amendment Number 2, Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Amendment Number 2 includes revisions to the State Highway Regional Choice Program, the Transit Program, and the Non-Motorized Program. This amendment also includes an update to the Federal Transportation Improvement Program narrative. The public review period ends tomorrow, January 20th, and the Kern Cog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on January 23rd. State and federal approval is required. At this time, I ask the Chair to please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Thank you. Public hearing is now open. Are there any public comments? None here and none online. Okay. I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Caltrans report. District 6. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, members of the committee. Uh, before I start, I have a lovely purple wallet here. I'm not sure oh, whose it is. <laughs> uh, I, you don't have to get it now. Just making sure I wasn't accused of taking it. <laughs> Remember, Crump assured me it wasn't his when I asked if it was his, but <laughs> let's make it sure. Okay, just make it sure. All right. Didn't want to get blamed for taking it. You were right. I'm sorry I doubted you. A um, couple funding opportunity updates. want to give some reminders out for Clean California. So we're the announcement for Cycle 2, call for projects, will be going out end of this month with due dates of April 2023. Uh, as you call, we had a very good Cycle 1, uh, $100 million available this year. Um, we're also planning for a Clean California Day of Action on March 25th to encourage outreach and to basically bring awareness to the program. So if any agencies are interested in doing dump days or things of that nature to attract attention, please let us know. I'm happy to have our Clean California coordinator come out and do a presentation if need be. Also a couple of other discretionary grant programs. We are gearing up for the Highway to Boulevards program, very, very comparable to the Reconnecting Community Federal program that just went out. They just closed recently. There's $149 million available for that, um, just for California only. And then the raise uh, call for projects is out $1.5 billion. That's a federal program with applications due on February 20, February 28th of this year. Uh, the annual call for projects for the Caltrans planning grants, that call went out on January 12th with applications due on March 9th. We'll be partnering with District 9 on doing a in-person workshop. Um, also, we'll be, doing hybrid, we'll be doing hybrid as well, so we'll be allowing for virtual attendance um, we don't need any brown act things anybody could attend so for that event um, and it will be held in our fresno district office so looking forward to that um, obviously weather is a hot topic right now so a couple updates on closures so state route 33 at the county line with our uh, district 5 uh, partners uh, we have a contractor will come out on monday under director's orders there's a full closure there we hope to have it open by february 1st uh, but we may be able to get it open sooner with one-way traffic uh, it's flooding out at State Route 33 in Blackwell's Corner. Uh, has some mudslide come through there. We've been able to clear the roadway, but they're still out there working on clearing the shoulders. Have cones out there. Uh, State Route 166 is open. Uh, had a huge mudslide there as well. And then State Route 178 by the canyon. There was a rock slide out there, and there's currently an overhanging rock that created concerns for the workers and the motoring public. So we will have that assessed tomorrow. Uh, so we'll definitely close until tomorrow, perhaps longer once the site's fully assessed. They'll be blasting some of the rock that fell. And then there'll be some work on 99 near 7th Standard Road. Some of you have traveled north into Fresno Norris. There's a little dip that occurs in there. Um, I guess there is a, a, a seismic fault line there that requires some attention. So they'll be pumping underneath to, to fix the structure of the roadway through there. As for projects, old US 99 to White Lane Road. This is a 99 rehab project. Uh, plans to switch the bypass to the southbound direction towards the end of this month and start uh, laying the concrete pavement and lowering of the freeway profile under Panama Lane overcrossing and White Lane overcrossing after the traffic switch. Uh, expected completion date for that project is fall of 2023. Um, good news, Union Avenue, uh, the Hawk uh, project there, long awaited. Uh, they put the loops in today. They're supposed to start doing testing tomorrow. 
Um, so it'll be fully activated here pretty soon. Just a couple of punch list items related to signage, et cetera. But that'll be wrapped up hopefully uh, completely in the next week. So I know that's one's long overdue. Stay Route 46, uh, segment 4B, where the two-lane conventional highway to a four-lane facility near Lost Hills. Um, that project, the girder erection is complete. The bridge deck construction is ongoing, and the retaining wall construction is ongoing. It's scheduled to be completed at the end of this month. Scheduled completion of that project is December of this year. Um, the next segment, segment 4C, uh, funds were allocated in December. We are working, have a few challenges, but we're working on getting the advertisement out for, for upcoming construction to piggyback off of 4B here. In Maricopa, we have a cap-in project to rehabilitate about nine miles of pavement from 33 to Capello Street. Uh, we expect that project to be able to advertise uh, this summer. Uh, we'll be adding a crosswalk at State Route 33 and enhancing a crosswalk at Kern Street. Uh, this project currently is in the design phase. Left turn channelization on State Route 119 at Kern Street and Airport Road. That project achieve, will achieve uh, achieve rate of list in, in April of last year and construction is anticipated to start this coming March. The, uh, sorry, I have a lot of projects. I feel like I haven't been here in a few months, so mm -hmm. I'm playing catch up right now, so bear with me. Uh, State Route 184 Sunset Roundabout. Construction started in October with a full closure and detour. Expected completion of that project is pushed back to March of uh, this year. Kind of got set back a little bit with the rainy month we had. The Arvin 223-184 roundabout, that project's about 75% complete. Uh, right now, construction consists of the Splitter Islands and the Roundabout Center, and we expect completion in March of uh, this year. And then the couple rehab projects on 184, the Morning Drive Rehab. Uh, so that project is in the design right-of-way phase. Right-of-way is actually complete, and we expect that project to be ready to list in January of this month and plans to go to CTC for its allocation in March. Weed Patch, uh, Weed Patch Highway, similar rehab project on 184, currently in design and right away as well, and we expect that project to be ready to list in, in April of this year. And with that, if that wasn't enough already, completes my report, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I have a couple. Uh, you mentioned Union Avenue, and that's mm -hmm. great. The Hawk's getting close. Uh, what Do we have a schedule yet on the lane reduction and the cycle track oh the uh for union avenue i do not i apologize that, that's linked to clean california so i know there's an early delivery schedule for that one um i'll be sure to add that to my updates for upcoming months and i'll in the meanwhile I'll email you as well okay great appreciate it uh, i had mentioned i'm not sure if you were here or not uh the 24th 58 uh westbound under 99 we did a great job with the green paint and a bike path through there and and we were going to at some point work on the eastbound mm -hmm. is anything happening there yeah nothing as of yet we have been talking about that so what we've been doing is we've been looking at our discretionary funds for our minor pot and so we do have that on, on i'll say starting off with a, with a wish list item and now it's just kind of trying to figure out a way to secure funding okay but i know john lou and i are having active conversations about okay. that one yeah i've written it a few times and i think you know some paint would help a lot understood Thank you. Uh, and one last one I think I'd mentioned when you weren't here, the bike path underneath 99 has lights, but the lights haven't been on for a few months. Is this the Kern River? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that actually was shared with me. I did reach out to our maintenance folks and they were checking as part of the electrical maintenance agreement and they were looking into that. So I need, that's on me. I need to follow okay. up with them. Okay, great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions for District 6? I have a quick question. Yes. Is the roundabout, the Garza Circle roundabout, is that part of Clean California also? That's another Clean California project. Okay, so, so maybe I need to do a better job. I'll, 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 as we move forward on these projects, since I know those are quick delivery with the Clean California with a two-year time frame we had, um, I'll, act, I'll get updates on the Clean California projects for future reports. Thank you. I, if I may ask a question. Sure. Regarding this project in Wasco, um, the great separation at 43 and J Street. Um, I know that there's a roundabout scheduled to be constructed there, um, but there's also the overpass being built. Um, and I have a couple of questions. The, the overpass, are there additional lanes being built there? Um, because originally our agreement with uh, High Speed Rail was uh, that they were gonna make that four lanes wide plus a uh, access to pedestrians and I look at it and I just don't see how that is mm -hmm. happening right now. 
and also when will the uh, um, roundabout will, build, uh, will be built? I'm going to look to, unfortunately, look to Aaron for help. If if that was updated, our our quarterly meeting that wasn't at. I I I have a little bit more information, uh, yes. Mayor. So so the the bridge that's being built now is is for high speed rail. It's not related to replacing that older um, freight railroad bridge. Yes. So the roundabout will be built in conjunction with the replacement of the the freight line that goes over 46 and that will be built together I believe the start date is at least a year away maybe two years uh, uh, but it, and it will be at least two lanes in each direction when it is done right now it's only one lane in each direction that is correct and that was my question because as the um, overpass is being built for the high-speed rail I just don't see the width but it's difficult because they have a lot of uh, uh, pilings you know there to sustain the structure that they're building. And it just makes it difficult to determine whether they're building four lanes or not. It, the, the overpass that High Speed Rail is building right now will will not have to be replaced and uh, is wide enough to accommodate the wider road. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have a question. Um, yes, ma'am. You said uh, two, 223, um, you said 75 uh, percent complete do you have like a like a date yeah i think maybe? um that was they're expecting completion uh march of this year march yeah i don't have exact date in march but anticipating that's okay march and the other question is uh, clean california you said if someone has a project or or wants to get on it what's the date on that so clean california the call for projects we're expecting to go out by the end of this month mm -hmm. and then those applications will be due um in april April. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. Any other questions for District 6? District 9, you're up. Good evening. My report will be much shorter. Um, sorry. We are, uh, Environmental is currently working with our District 9 Public Relations Office to schedule public uh, circulation of the 58 truck climbing lanes project in the next several months a um, few months and so we need to set a date for that but it's coming um, the Rosamond zero escape clearing clean California project opened for bids today so we're anxious to see how those came in we're continuing maintenance work on the sewer pumps at the boron rest area we have um, oh it suddenly kicked on. <laughs> we have um, halted work on the Cummin Cummings Valley left turn lane pocket project because of inclement weather. And so construction will begin again on that one in the beginning of February, assuming that weather, the weather continues to not rain. <laughs> um, the Rosamond Mojave rehabilitation project on State Route 14 um, is finally done. And so, um, Crews adjusted guardrail delineators and did a few repairs, and so the project is now complete. The West Ward Avenue closure in Ridgecrest, um, Ward at West Ward Avenue will be closed at State Route 178, um, and vehicles will not be able to turn onto State Route 178 in the intersection during work hours from 7 to 5, Monday through Friday, for the near future. We completed a project initiation document for the Freeman Gulch Safety Improvement Project. So in lieu of the four laning, we're doing safety improvements in that area. So that, that initiation document is complete and we'll be moving forward. And then we received bids on the Freeman 3 CAPM project. So we received four bids and we're now waiting for a contract award on that project. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions? This is Phil on Tatchby. Question or a comment? Uh, the uh, project between Mojave and Roseman is a really, really uh, excellent improvement to that roadway. It's uh, really smooth, and it, they went down deep, and uh, looks like they have concrete over asphalt. Now, when you start on, there's an upcoming in the next year or so, or this year, a rehab project on 58 between. Tatchby and Keene, is that correct? Or Tatchby or 
in Bakersfield at one point. Is that correct? Yes, there is a project. I'm not sure when we'll be starting on that. I would have to check into that. All right. And now, is that going to be similar to the uh, quality of the project between Mojave and Roseman? I could double check, but I would assume so. Yes. Yes. There, uh, the most recent uh, uh, project between Caliani and uh, the Arvin is that 223. Uh, that was a really uh, a really good project. Uh, eliminating a lot of uh, bad pothole areas. So looking forward to that kind of a rehab on the 58. Thank you very much. Thank you. We had a rough time getting through that Rosamond Mojave project, but it turned out well. <laughs> yes, but it's an uh, excellent roadway. So uh, is that this year, the rehab on 58? I think it is. I will double check. Okay, I think you mentioned that the last uh, couple of meetings ago. We did, yeah, Thank we did talk much. about it previously. If you so. can get back to me or get back to somebody, uh, just let me know, give me a, a, an estimate. Thank you. Okay, we will do. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for District 9? Hearing none, Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Board Members. I have a few items on this agenda. Um, back in December, I did attended a CTC meeting in Riverside County at that uh, California Transportation Commission meeting. Uh, the ATP Cycle 6 was adopted. I'm glad to say Kern County received almost $9 million for a, a pedestrian project on Norris Road. State Route 46, Segment 4C, which is the final piece of widening between I-5 and the current San Luis Obispo County line also received an allocation. That's great news. Next CTC meeting is next week in the Sacramento area. I will be attending in person and the CTC is scheduled to um, take the second and final action on the uh, STIP amendment I told you about back in November where we would shift money from Hageman Road flyover to uh, the north the eastbound 58 to northbound 99 loop connector which would fully fund the seventh movement out of eight movements at that interchange and would leave only one final movement between those two nationally significant routes route state route 58 and 99 so good news if it is approved and it is on the consent agenda and it's likely to be approved during the past month i've continued to engage on state route 99 and 58 issues 204 union avenue thank you caltrans for the progress on union avenue seven standard and route 43 safety improvements on route 33 are now fully locked in earlier today i attended a update meeting on State Route 46, and finally, uh, I've told some of you personally, but I'll tell tell everyone publicly that we did not receive the uh, federal grant we were seeking jointly with Caltrans for the truck climbing lanes on uh, Route 58 between Bakersfield and Tehachapi. We learned of that that I learned of that in in late December. I was very disappointed. Um, there was one project in that was funded in California in that category and it was uh, a project in Madera County along uh, Route 41. Congratulations to them. We will keep trying. Subject to any of your, your questions, uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Hearing none, that is the end of the TPPC meeting and we will start the Kern Cog meeting uh, roll calls the same public comments are the same are there any public comments for this meeting I'm seeing some movement in the crowd Miss Asha Chandy is this on do we need to turn it on no you're good just be close to it That now, now there's a light. Okay. 
Hey everyone, my name is Asha. I'm with Bike Bakersfield. I just wanted to um, thank you all for the support with the ATP program, the Safe Routes for Cyclists, and also the e-bike um, pilot program, which we'll be utilizing for the Safe Routes for Cyclists program. Um, excited to bring some e-bike learning and knowledge to all of the communities in Kern County. And um, I will leave my cards by the sign-in sheet if you ever need to contact me or have uh, an event you'd like to hold bike ride or community event you'd like us to be at um, we'd love to bring out some e-bikes and um, have some fun out there so thank you thank you any other public comments seeing none consent agenda opportunity for public comment any member wish to remove anything from the consent agenda Motion to approve the consent agenda, Chairman. Second. Okay. Roll call vote. Yes, thank you. Uh, Vasquez. Here. Trujillo. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes, and yes on those other ones when I dropped off a communication on that. On that other agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bob Smith. Yes. Zach Scrivener. Aye. Gilberto Reyna. Aye. Kathy Prout. Aye. Jim Crichton. Yes. Orshel Cryer. Yes. John Crump. Yes. And Saul Ion. Aye. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and board members. A few quick items on this agenda. The San Joaquin Valley Policy Council meeting. Uh, the next one is scheduled for Friday, January 27th. It will be held uh, in person in Fresno. There will be a call-in option. That's for Supervisor Scribner, um, Councilman Smith, or Ma Vice Mayor Prout, you're, you're through. please let us know if anybody wants to attend in person. Right now, I'm not, or staff is not planning on attending in person. But if you want to, we'll be glad to drive you there. Um, the Kern Regional Awards of Merit celebration will be held Thursday, March 2nd, 2023, at Seven Oaks Country Club again. Thank you for. Uh, being the Master of Ceremonies, Chairman Smith. If anyone is interested in attending, please RSVP. We have a, uh, we, the board just passed an item that listed the attendees. Please take a look at that if you haven't already. Uh, there's uh, people and groups being awarded from all over the county, as usual. The San Joaquin Valley Annual Policy Conference will be held this year April 24th to 26th at the Great Wolf Lodge in Manteca. Please let us know if you're interested in attending that. In your folder this evening is the January 2023 uh, edition of Projects of Regional Significance, the schedule of cash disbursements for October, a flyer on trucking with clean fuels conference and convoy timeline of events for January, February, March, and April. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chair or board members, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, any member statements? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Have a sweet Valentine's Day. Good night, everybody.